الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in سورة الأعراف chapter 7 verse 26 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني آدم قد أنزلنا عليكم لباسا يواري سوآتكم وريشا ولباس التقوى ذلك خير ذلك من آيات الله لعلهم يذكرون O children of Adam, we have bestowed upon you clothing to conceal your private parts and as adornment, but the clothing of righteousness that is best, that is from the signs of Allah that perhaps they will remember. Now this is a continuation from the story of, of Adam and Eve that I mentioned last time. Is Allah Taala is addressing mankind in this verse with Ya Bani Adam. He didn't say, Ya Ayuha Al-Insan. He said, Ya Bani Adam. Specifically to remind us of the experience that Adam and Eve had with the devil in the garden before they were cast out. And in uh, five verses before that, in verse 20, uh, Allah says, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَا الشَّيْطَانُ لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُرِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا Partial, that's the beginning of the verse. But Satan whispered to them, to Adam and Eve, to make them apparent to, to make apparent to them that which was concealed from them of their private parts. When they sinned, their soul retreated, and now the body was was you know in charge, and they were aware of their nakedness, and they were going and trying to grab leaves and, and cover themselves. And that's that's what, what Satan does. He you know he orders man to take off, to, to be naked, to be nude, while Allah Taala wants you to cover up. So it, it's you know the two things are opposite. So the the, uh, the word anzalna we sent down, we bestowed upon you. It could be. A reference to the rain, that the rain comes down, it raises vegetation and animals. And you make clothing out of cotton, you make clothing out of you know, animal skin or, or, or so forth. So that could be the, you know, the term anzalna. And Allah's directive is modesty. Cover what needs to be covered. He specified what should be covered. For, for male, it is you know, from you know, the navel to, to the knee. For women, the entire woman is, is, a, is a aura, so it has to, she has to be covered. So the devil's directive is nudity. Go out, you know, just expose yourself. And exposure leads to arousal. Arousal leads to immoral, immorality. Immorality leads to corruption. Corruption de- leads to devastation. Devastation leads to unhappiness. And they all lead to hellfire. Well, ayyadu billah. So that's, that's the goal of the devil. He wants to get all of us into hellfire. That's the enmity that he has against Adam and all of his progeny. That's why Allah Taala wanted Adam and Eve to go through that experience. Don't trust the devil. Whatever he tells you, do not do it because he does not have your best interest. So the, the reference to saw'ah in this verse that Allah you know, sent all of this to cover the saw'ah. And sawa means any body part that requires covering. And in, in language, it's anything that you do not like to be exposed. It's, it's shameful, it's bad, it's unpleasant. A dead person, the entire dead person is a sawa. You have to cover them. Because it is unpleasant for people. For certain, you know, for, for you know, people that are alive, that the parts that need to be covered, if they were exposed, It'll be shameful. I mean, you would not be happy if that, was, if that happened. So that's the sawa. So Allah says, you have a sawa and you need to cover it. So Allah wa ta'ala tells us that many immoralities are built on nudity, on, on the exposure of not covering what needs to be covered. Allah wa ta'ala created the woman to be a mother a spouse, a daughter, an aunt. He did not create a woman to be a marketing tool to sell just about anything that you want to to sell. They put a half-naked 
woman in there to sell it. That, that is not, that's the work of the devil. That's not Allah's directive. So modesty and covering up are the prominent features of a believer. Men and women, that's not just for women. It's men and women, you have to be modest. And then Allah says, يَا بَنِي أَدَمَ قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا And feathers. Now feathers here, you know, feathers come from birds, and they're beautiful. I mean, when you look at different cultures, they love feathers. You know, the Indians used to put a feather in, you know, you make a whole headdress of, of all feathers. It, it's a sign of beauty. It's not meant for itself. It's a sign of adornment. Things that that are beautiful. You know, beauty is, is highly valued in human nature. We all love beauty. I mean, you can have something as functional, you'll never be satisfied with it until it's beautiful. So, you know, this beauty brings happiness to the, to, you know, to the, to the person. It brings calm. And the verse is advising believers, cover up, but make it beautiful. So it's not just functional. You have to add that, that additional component on top of it of beauty. And you may, you may wear clothes that cover, you know, cover what needs to be covered. They're dirty. They're torn up. They, you know, they smell. That is not, that's not pleasant. That's not beautiful. So Allah says, Cover what you need to be covered, but have some color coordination. Have, you know, nice clothes. Look nice. It's not enough to cover, but you have to address that beauty aspect of, you know, of, of that. And, you know, beautifying clothes, beautifying homes, beautifying your car. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you do it according to Allah's, Allah's uh, directives and it doesn't mean you're extravagant. Wanting a nice, beautiful home with nice furniture and nice colors on the walls and stuff is not extravagant. It's when you spend millions of dollars when everybody around you is starving, that's a different story. But money has nothing to do with, with beauty. You can, you can pick nice colors for your home, furniture that fits the decor, you know, have a nice lawn, all of these things are beauty that is pleasant to you and pleasant to everybody else. And Allah says, you know, don't just cover it, make it beautiful. And unfortunately, I, I see that in, in a lot of, you know, in, at least in, in Lebanon where I grew up. The home is beautiful, the streets are dirty. You cannot, I mean, why do you treat the public space differently than what you treat your private space? So you have to have both. You have to have, you know, beauty on, on, you know, inside your home and outside your home. So, you know, money is not the measure. It's the coordination that, that is required. It does not take a lot of money to, to pick, you know, nice colors and nice furniture and so on. So beauty is a necessity in human, in human psychology. And nobody should criticize others for wanting to have... A, you know, a nice car, maybe a nice color. That's not something that, you know, it, that's natural. It's as long as you're not, you know, being overly extravagant and wasting, and wasting money on it. You know, sometimes because functional is not good enough. You have to have beauty on top of functional to make it, to make it pleasant and appealing. And if you look at everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, it has both a functional role and, a, and an aesthetic role. Look at the apple. The apple is, you need it for food. But it looks beautiful. It smells nice. There's so much beauty in an apple that people would draw it and put, you know, put pictures and stuff. You didn't need any of this stuff. Because you just eat it and you want it for nutrition. But on top of the nutrition, you have all of these beauty aspects of shape, color, scent, and, and so on to bring, to bring happiness to man. Why do you think there are flowers out there? Nothing eats the flowers. 
Allah created the flowers so you would have, you would enjoy, you would recognize beauty and enjoy it. Because if Allah tells you there are beautiful things in heaven and you don't have anything in this world to kind of give you a frame of reference, you're not going to appreciate it. So beauty is an integral part of the human psyche, not just functionality. So beauty and coordination are desirable, but according to Allah's directives. You love to paint? Sure, you can paint, but you cannot paint a naked woman, for example. You can paint a natural scene or, you know, or an inanimate object. You do it according to Allah's, you know, Allah's directives, not, you know, you don't transgress when you do that. So good taste and cleanliness are from faith. Are they the part of the faith? And just like I said, you know, you take care of your home and you take care of your lawn. The lawn belongs to the people. If you have a beautiful home and a junkyard out, out in, in your front lawn, you're hurting other people, you know, psychologically. You are, you know, offending them. So you take care of the outside because that's public space. It belongs to everyone. So you, just like you beautify your home, beautify the outside of your home for people's sake. Now the last part of the verse is, it's, it's telling us that there are spiritual private parts that need to be covered as well. Perhaps that's more urgent than the physical aspect you know, of, of, you know, of the human body. Just like somebody is repulsed by you know, something they see or they smell or, or they perceive, they're also repulsed by hateful speech by vulgarity, by lying, by hypocrisy. All of these hurt other people. It is not appealing. It's a sawa. It's a sawa that needs to be covered. A home where the parents are always fighting with each other and hurling insults is a hell for the kids. That is not, that is not a, a home a believer should be in. So you have to take care of the spiritual aspect on top of the physical you know, aspect and the physical beauty. There has to be an inner beauty as well. So Allah says, وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ Righteousness is the best cover for these undesirable traits. You fear Allah, you have taqwa, you start behaving in a better way, and that is a beautifying aspect of the human of the human behavior so that is encouraged as well a believer is modest in appearance modest in speech and considerate in you know in in his manners towards others you have to be beautiful on the inside and the outside outside is, is not enough you can wear the best of clothes and your your you know your speech is so vulgar everybody will hate you Nobody, will, nobody loves a person like that. And Allah Taala wants you to be a lovable person. So he gives you all of these directives on how to be the perfect human being and a perfect specimen that you love yourself and others will love you as well. So if you advise a person, you do it in a gentle way. You do it in a beautiful way. You choose your words like you would pick fruit at the market. You're not going to just grab a bunch of fruit and put it in a bag. You take the fruit, you look at it. Does it all look good? Is it bad? Pick your words the same way. Pick your manners the same way. These are integral part of a believer's makeup. You can't just consider Islam as just, I'm going to pray and fast and, and do my hajj and do my zakat. That's not enough. That, these are the pillars. There's so much on top of those pillar, pillars that manners is a big chunk of it. And you have to have good manners and you have to beautify those manners. It's not good to be just good enough. You need to strive to be excellent. That's the level of Ihsan. The level of Ihsan is to be perfect in all manners of good. Prophet Muhammad showed us this in many of his traditions, but I want to pick up one that, that just stuck with me 
you know, for, for, you know, forever. He was, sallallahu alayhi wa coming back from one of his battles and, you know, coming back with the army and they were on the outskirts of Medina. He told the, uh, the, the army, stop and camp. We're almost home. I mean, uh, come on, it's, it's another, another couple of hours, we'll be home. No, stop, make camp. We'll go to Medina tomorrow. In the meantime, beautify yourselves, clean your clothes, clean your bodies. And that gives time for their wives and for their families to take care of, you know, how, how do you like it to show up at home? The kids are, you know, are dirty, running around, the, the house is all disheveled. What kind of a, you know, so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, he was very particular about the beauty aspect of it. So he wanted the military, he wanted Medina to know, we're there, we'll be there tomorrow, prepared. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how beautiful is that? That's how a believer should be. Don't just look at the basics. Look at the aesthetics part of it. Because he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah wants us to be a marker among human beings. A beautiful specimen that you stand out. You stand out in the way you look. You stand out in the way you behave. You stand out in the way you speak. That's how you're going to attract people to Islam. Non-Muslims don't care if you spend all night praying and crying and, and having a spiritual... That's for you. What they see is what you show them. How you behave at work, how you interact with others, are you using vulgar language or are you gentle with everyone? Are you honest? Are you hardworking? These are all from the perfections of your character and it's not enough to just be, do the, minim, you know, the minimum that you have to do. You have to excel. You have to reach the level of Ihsan. So beauty should be an essential part of appearance and behavior of a believer. Because Allah Taala is beautiful. His names are beautiful and he wants the believers to be beautiful as well. In appearance and in manners. So we have to take care of this aspect of beauty and show non-Muslims how beautiful Islam and Muslims are. That's, what, that's the only thing that's going to impress them. أقول خلقا ذا واستغفر الله لكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم